in prayer, talking with the Lord, I was hoping, I'm believing for this tonight. That the Lord shows us some things about His love. Things that we need specifically for what we've been called to be a part of. In, in Mark 12, verse 29, Mark 12, verse 29, I want to say too, it is so good to see Lane here tonight. Have not seen her in quite some time. So before you get out of here tonight, make sure you hug on her neck and catch up to see how things are going. It's a, so blessed to see you here tonight and your friend. Uh, good to have you here with us. And, and uh, part of our, our heart and her heart, there, all that, the blending and, and just so wonderful. She's only going to be here with us for a day. So make sure you, you don't, don't, uh, don't hold off till Sunday. Make sure you touch base with her tonight. because She's uh, going to have to travel. And, but again, good to see you. Mark 12, verse 29. I'm going to read. It says, And Jesus answered him, and they were, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself there is none other commandment greater than these lord we ask you add your blessing to the word to the teaching and to how we hear tonight lord lord let those downloads from heaven just be lord we just want to be open and, and you're free freely giving lord and so we receive and we we confess in faith that you're welcome to speak truth to us tonight in jesus name amen 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 and so this word here that talks about the you know, we use a pretty strong word, and I mention this often, a command. Some of, some of these commands are here to help us to be um, strong in our soul, to be healthy in our soul. If we will, you put, this is an, a word that brings emphasis. He's saying this is very important. So I like to key in on those things. That's a strong word. It's not really, a, doesn't make you feel warm and fuzzy, but yet it does put an emphasis on what's about to be said thereafter. And so... What we see here is, so, what was the basic response? Somebody paraphrase that for me as to what the, the great command is. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. So, if we look at this, imagine a stool, okay, that has... Um, Three legs. Okay. Three legs. Now, how, how, what good is a, a stool that only has two legs? That's a, not very good. This, there's stability in this, what is being shared here. There's three things that are being mentioned. It's love God. I'm going to say others instead of writing neighbors because I'm not sure how to spell it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> others. And then self. And so this three-legged stool is something that helps us to find stability. And what he's teaching us here, and he says, Jesus is, I mean, I like that this is the letters of red. He comes in and he tells us something very important that we need to love the, the Lord God. Now, there's another scripture that teaches us about loving God, and it, it goes on and expounds. How do we love God? It's defined within other places within the scripture. So tonight's night of Bible study, so I'm going to draw from you a little bit. How do we love the, You shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Yep, heart. Oh, boy. With all of our heart. What was the next one? Soul. Next one, mind. Someone said it earlier. And strength. Okay. Now. In this, it's neat. First of all. 
and this, this, one is a, this was a point that the Lord was speaking to me. It was a little bit challenging for me to, to put into words, so please bear with me here. But there's something, the Bible tells us that God is love. Okay? The Bible also tells us that God is spirit. The Bible also tells us that He is the I Am. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And so you can go through, and these are all definitions of who God is. And so a lot of times, I've, I've, and I've even heard people say this, that love... If somebody has love, they know God. And that's not necessarily true. And so I, wa I want to clarify that. What the Bible says is if, if somebody operates in love, they are of God. And I don't, want us to, I don't want us to take these two things, God is love. I don't want us to put an equal sign here. Because when I do this, that means it goes kind of both ways. That these are the one and the same. God transcends love is the point I want to make. God is love and then some and then some and then some of things that are good, great, and better. And so we don't want to just talk about love because here's the thing. When we go and study out the scriptures, what's another word that we hear used in place of the word love? Who said that? Charity. Somebody said it. Charity. Oh, my girl. Yeah, that's why I hang out with her. <laughs> Sometimes that's, that word is used as charity. Those things are kind of interchangeable. And so if we look up that, we go to Galatians. Somebody give me a spout off. I know Melanie knows quite a, uh, almost knows these by heart. But what are the different uh, love is or charity is? Talk to me, guys. Because I do. I want us to write them down. What is it? Patient. Well, somebody said kindness. Self-control. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Does not envies. And and uh, let's see. It's not self-seeking. I'm way out of order here, but that's all right. We'll, we'll, we get the point. And I'm just going to put dot, dot, dot. Cause we've, and I'm going to read them off. So I don't, don't want to write them all down. But does not dishonor others. Does not boast. Is not easily angered. Does not delight in evil. Rejoices with truth. Always protects. Always trusts. Always hopes and always perseveres. And so when we're talking about God, He is again all that and then some okay and so what we have to try to do here to keep the command that the Lord Jesus was communicating to his people we have to make sure that we do keep things kind of in a certain order and I like the way that he mentioned them. he said this love the Lord your God first I love tonight we got together and we're praising and we're worshiping we're lifting up uh, and magnifying him and, and really kind of positioning ourselves to remind ourselves of how wonderful he is I, I love the Lord, but I can quite honestly tell you I don't know how to fully effectively show him the love that he deserves I don't I have a Measure of an ability to do that. I believe we as individuals have different measures of an ability to express how much we love him But here's the, the funny thing for us to even be able to do this to love Him, we can't do it without Him. It almost seems like circular reasoning, but it's, it's amazing because this is, a, kingdom, uh, this is a, a heavenly truth that for us to really grow in our ability to express love toward Him, we have to just be in constant fellowship with Him. Praying without ceasing. Anybody heard that scripture? Praying without ceasing. I, I used to think, now how in the world... Is that going to happen? How in the world am I going to live 24-7 every minute and second hour of the day? You know, the whole... Because I, I know I can't do that. But there is prayer being a form of communication. There is a way for us to be able to constantly walk with Him and be led by His Spirit. I truly do. I believe that. 
He's able to minister to our heart if we open our hearts to that. And so there's this communion going on. How many of you believe in the praying in tongues? The prayer of tongues does what? It edifies us, right? It encourages us. It, it speaks edification to us. That doesn't mean, we, I, doesn't mean I understand the tongues. It doesn't mean I always have a, a personal uh, uh, interpretation of what I'm praying out of my spirit. But what it does mean is, is that the Lord says that He will edify me. He will encourage me. And, and in that, that means there's something going on whether I am mentally aware of it or not. It's happening. There's communion there with Him. Now, I may not sense it. Oh, you know, I just love the Holy Ghost goosebumps. Anybody here like it when the Lord just showers out that hot oil on you? It's like, woo, you ready to run. And I, and I appreciate those times, but that, that's uh, just a, a one expression of Him communicating with us. That's just one manifestation of Him being with us. The fact is that He's constantly speaking to us, and if we're allowing Him to have His way, there's things that are being planted in our spirit that He's putting there all the time. And we're learning, as we learn how to love Him, here's the neat thing. The commands that we see within the Scripture, as we learn how to love Him and grow in showing that love to Him, these next two things become super simple. Super, super simple. It's like we have a bucket that the Lord, let's just call our spirit, man, like it's a bucket that holds God's spirit, His love inside of us, the things that He's spoken into our hearts, into our inner person. And what can happen is, is our bucket can become so full. How many of you in here get, when that coffee's really good in the morning and you take your little coffee cup and you fill it all the way to the brim and you get in your vehicle and you're going down the road and it, it, you, you got this coffee com, or this cup is completely full. What's going to start happening as you start traveling? It's going to spill. It's going to splash out. And it's the same thing with, with, with our uh, our bucket is full when the, the Lord and His love we've received, we've been in communion with Him and we are just so full of the love of God and we're recognizing how much He loves us and we're trying to share how much we love Him and, and express that. We're so full. Everywhere we go, when we walk around, what's going to happen is there's going to be some things that splash out on people. It's just going to happen. It's not going to be something that I have to remember to say, oh yeah, I'm supposed to love. Oh yeah. Lori can say, Chip, where are you going? I got to go love others. It's a commandment. When this, if we get this right, it just happens. Out of our belly flows rivers of living water. Out of the mouth speaks the abundance of the heart. That's why he says, when I send you places... Even if I send you before great kings and presidents, whatever, you know, today's vernacular, the terminology. He said, don't worry about what you're going to say. When we have this right, he'll give us exactly what we need. It'll come out of us. We won't have to muster it up. And then as this is progressing... We love others, but at the same time, we can come into this place of learning to, there's this other thing, self. We got to, you know, learning how to love self. One of the things that I see in the church world right now is condemnation. Here's the funniest thing about condemnation. I'm going to say self-condemnation. Let me clarify. Self-condemnation. The funny thing about self-condemnation is it's still self-centered. Ah. I know that didn't make, you, didn't make you feel warm and fuzzy. But it's true. When I get self-condemning, what I'm doing is, is I'm taking the, the focus off where it should truly be and is that, that God is in me, God is with me, God has purposes, callings, and gifts, talents, and anointings in me that He has placed there, not for me, but for the ability to love Him and the ability to love others. And the moment I start condemning myself, what happens is, is this becomes the main focus. And that's called self-centered, self-focused. And guys, that's the same as pride. 
in a sense. But it's inverted. I'm just a lonely scoundrel or a lowly scoundrel. I don't deserve the God. Leave it alone. We got a mic somewhere? Thank you. We can't self condemnation is does everybody get what I'm saying here it's still being self-centered this has been an ongoing thing for me because I I would compare myself to Dan because everyone anyone who knows Dan knows that he loves well <laughs> and he communicates love well uh -huh. and for the longest time I'd be like I don't love like you I don't feel the way you can express and all this and that and I mean when we first got married I was a mess because of of self-condemnation and insecurity and and it got to the place where, I, it, you know, God really had to show me if I hate myself, there's no way I can love anybody else. Right. You know, and, and so I had to learn identity, how much he loved me. And that though I have issues, I am better off than when I started. And so and even when people would want to project things on me, you know, that, you, you know, you should be a better this or that pastor's wife, more mature in the spirit and things, you know, people do that, unfortunately, and the enemy uses them to do it. They know how to push. The enemy knows how to push those insecurity buttons. And I had to get those, those big girl pants on, so to speak, with me, with me and Daddy God, that I am accepted on my worst day. I'm accepted, that he loves me. And as I started to let that wash me and that um, he's going to finish the work that he started in me right. until the day of completion, Amen. those days where you feel like I can't do anything right, no one loves me, no one likes me, it didn't matter as much because I had a Daddy God who did. And then as I began to let that love change my perspective about me, it helped to express that love then to others, which was there because he's in me. So right. I do have love for others, but you know, it, it's starting to ooze out more as I'm letting him fill me more and fill my mind about I'm not so awful after all because he's washed me. He Amen. loves me. It's all okay. You know? And so I think that it's, it's really hard to pour out to others the way that God desires us to though when we are so self-centered, self-focused, and I've been queen we, of it. She says she's confessing a fault of her own. Listen, we can all, we all should raise our hand to the fact that this is all of us. It's self-focused. It's self, even if it's on our weaknesses. And, and that's what the enemy likes to do because it's kind of like a pious, I don't know, it's like it's justified that we get to feel that way about ourselves. You know, well, that's not. Pride is, you know, trying to think more of yourself than you are. Well, there is, pride is really self-centeredness. And so the moment, it doesn't necessarily have to be that you're puffed up, but the, the focus is just in the wrong area. And the Lord wants us to set free. Than you ought. Right, that's good. She's, Melanie's saying you, you, you were, the Bible tells us that we're not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought. And that there, so there is a, a, a way that we should esteem ourselves in the Lord that's healthy. That's not being proud, but it's healthy because the, this is, is the uh, others are relying on us to get that balance right. They need us to catch that. And so when we talk about the different things here of loving the Lord, now I'm going to go back to this because this is what feeds these other two. This here feeds all this. And so with your heart, somebody tell me, uh, when you think of your heart, what are some words that come to mind? What, if you're loving the Lord with your heart, what is that? What is it? What's it look like? I, I put a couple things down here. Heart is trusting. Heart's not done with the head. Or I'm sorry, loving with the heart is not intellect your heart in your heart you trust because it's not based on a knowledge it's based on faith okay with your heart is believing believing has a little bit to do with your brain in your thinking your mind but believing in the core believing in your heart Confessing with your mouth. You guys have heard this within the scriptures. There's something that's settled in the inner person of who we are, the core of who we are. This is where we trust and where we believe. So we love Him when we... Tr we express love when we trust Him. And we believe that His word is true. We believe in Him. This is the heart, loving with the heart. Loving with the soul is emotions. 
being passionate, our passions, and, and being zealous, you know, the, the, just getting excited is a condition of the soul for the Lord. And, and, and loving Him, when we, when we do these things, when we love out of the soul, with our soul, this is what happens. We're going to be kind of contagious. People are going to catch this. And they're going to go, oh my gosh. When they get around a person who loves with their soul, when they love the Lord with their soul, it is contagious. It rubs off. And so with the soul, it's emotion, with passions and zeal. Now with the mind, mind, when you love with the mind, it says, I like this because it, we can kind of study him. I love the scripture because with my mind, I can go through and I can read and I can learn about him. That's where I get some connection to start to begin to understand who he is. So we can study him. We can study him through the scriptures. We can study him through creation with our mind, our intellect. The cross, when we start considering the cross, think about all that went on there. We start thinking about Jesus' sufferings. You know, this is loving with our mind and, and really being given to what He has done and what He is doing. I mean, and it's, it's you know, just a... I, I put down here in my notes, loving Him with the mind is just a constant consideration, reminding myself that He is what it's all about. That's loving Him. It's constantly, but it's, it's, it's through this intellect. It's through understanding. But, but then it goes on to the last one. It says, with your strength. Now this one, this one took me a, a little bit to, fig, to, to really catch some insight on what he was, the Lord tells us in this. And so I wrote down three different things here that after just chewing on it, praying in the Spirit, listening to Him and and this might just be for me in, in the interpretation of what it means to love with all my strength. But it's to love Him with my accomplishments, to love Him with the influence that I have, and to love Him with my tangible capacities or competencies. Okay. So if you were to look at certain people who can sing well, let's say they have great voices. Okay, that's a gift, but it's also a strength. They have a strength in that area. They should, if we're going to use that as a form of, of loving with all of our strength, we take our voice and we sing unto the Lord. We take our strength and we submit it to Him, those gifts, talents, and abilities. And I'm going to use a different word, and, and it's it's... It's kind of one of those tough words to, to study out in the scriptures, but anointings are our strength. Now, let me, let me build on this. Can you guys give me five minutes? I know we're a little bit, five minutes, and then we'll wrap it up, because, but I, this is really kind of a, a point that I'd like for us to catch. Sometimes, like Mel, and Melanie gave it a perfect example. If Melanie tries to be like Dan, she's going to be the worst Dan ever. Okay? We're not called to be like other people. We're called to be like God in the way that He fashions us to be like Him. And so an anointing is an understanding on what it is that I'm supposed to be like. And, it's the, and, and it can be recognized through some of the strengths that I have or the strengths that you have. And so in processing this, if we want to know what it is that our strengths are, that the Lord has, has uh, He's handmade us to have certain strengths that are unique, just as unique as every individual who's in here, that's how many different strengths we, could, we can have of every individual in here. Discovering what that is, this is another nice thing, because here, I'm going to use a term here. Uh, when you guys think of an evangelist, what do you think of? Just talk to me. Think of an evangelist, you think of traveling preacher, good. Good news. Good news. Soul winner. Soul winner. Leading people to the Lord. Billy Graham, that's, yeah, come on. Energizer. Energizer. I think of a bunny rabbit when I think of Energizer. No, yeah. I'm sorry, I've been branded. Uh, <laughs> but no, really, just somebody to get you ex excited. Well, here's, here's the neat thing. 
Some people have an anointing to evangelize that leads them beyond just being some. Every person should share the good news, okay? Can I get an amen on that? Some people have an anointing. They have a strength to evangelize. They've got it. God gave it to them. And if I watch an evangelist and I see how great they do at being able to go out in the streets, because to me, this is what an evangelist does. Everywhere they go, people are getting saved. Share. It can't not, because of this, because this is right, you can't not be sharing the love of Jesus. can't not be thinking about getting someone saved. Because that person who's called to be an evangelist has that anointing, who has that strength. That is what that person is supposed to give as a representation or an offering of love, loving with all your strength. That's what that person gives to the Lord. And, and here's the thing. If we recognize that anointing, and in, in, let's say that's me and then I have that anointing, I want to do that as often as I can. I want to find venues that I can do that as often as I can. I want to, if, if I'm a, if, let's just say there's, the, there's a prophetic anointing. I believe in a prophetic anointing. I believe that we should be prophesying all the time then. If you've got a prophetic anointing and to love the Lord with your strength, take that strength of prophecy and use it for His glory and begin to help others to connect with God because that is now, now we're keying in on what God gave us as a strength. He said, now use this for them. Use this for others. But here's the thing. If you're a prophet or you have a prophetic anointing, don't beat yourself up because you're not a very good evangelist. If you've got a, an evangelistic anointing, don't beat yourself up because you're not a good uh, pastor. These are different anointings. These are different strengths. God put us in here. Each We're all part of the body. A, member, a bunch of members, a bunch of individual members that He has made special in a very specific way, and He puts us together as He sees fit. That's what the Scripture says. So don't, please don't look at other people and be tore up, because it leads right back to how we started. It leads to condemnation, because look, if you're, if you're anointed to be an evangelist, and you're trying to be an apostle or something, you're going to be sorely, sorely disappointed. And people around you are not going to be blessed. It's not going to happen. So understanding what our strengths are and to love Him with those strengths. And here's how we can understand what our strengths are. I'm closing with this. Write down 10 things that you feel like you're pretty good at. Write down 10 things that you feel like you're pretty good at. Some of you might be good at uh, I know we got a sister here that likes to paint. She's pretty good at painting. She's used that strength to minister unto the Lord to His people. But write them down. Write those ten things down. Try to consider what just comes out of you almost involuntarily when you get around people that's of God. Some of you have got the gift of mercy, the showing of mercy. When you get around somebody, you're going to be, mercy's just going to ooze out of you. Now, here's the weird thing. You may not recognize it. And so my prayer tonight is, as we're closing up here, my prayer tonight is, is those that the Lord would highlight these things in and of ourselves. And if we've been duped by the enemy and we've misdiagnosed what we feel like is our anointing, and we're not on the right track, I'm believing God's going to bring some clarity to that. He's going to fix that. There's so many things that God wants done in, in His body, through His body, we limit it every time we try to put it within this special definition. You know, there's how many uh, gifts of the Spirit are there? Somebody put nine gifts of the Spirit. Nine is correct biblically. At least. 
at least nine. And so, so if we was, we don't want to limit ourselves. We want to, we want to highlight those things because that's what the Bible says. First uh, Corinthians twelve talks about the nine gifts of the Spirit. But there's more. There's more. There's offices. There's administrations. There's helps. There's, there's, there's one that says if you're called to lead, then lead well. If you're, if you got that anointing as a leader, lead well. That's loving. That's, that's with your strength, all your strength. And so for the Lord to highlight that in us, that's what I'm believing. I'm believing He's going to make sense of that for us. That, that, that we're not going to try to become something like someone else. But that we get to draw on that grace of that specific personal anointing. And it, we will start to flourish in this.